and gals, and every here from Drake Wing Gaming. I'm seventy miles toward the gaming drag today. I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Cilio Ties Path. So let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you were up, and let's go back to this irritating damn wolf. All right. I think you had better leave, Glenn. Not a chance. I ain't done with the two of you yet. Then get it over with. Say what it is you want to say and get out. Gladly, I'd come here hoping the two of you had learned yearn for the old days. This reunion would be a proper one, of the once great black claws and not the sell-out bullshit it would become. It's plain to see that ain't the case, though. I guess I ain't surprised you two managed to disappoint me. It's about all you're good at, other than selling out like chumps. But I was prepared for such an eventuality. You see the rights to the name the Black Claws? Those rights belong to me. Do they now? Well, I was the damn front man. I performed two roles, bass and vocals. And I wrote most of the damn songs, too. By right, the Black Claws are mine. And yet, Lucas and I made up the majority of the band. And in later years, I not only performed two roles, but Lucas and I wrote a number of songs and were solely responsible for our late success. It's two versus one, Glenn. You'd be smart to drop it. Hmm. Maybe you'd prefer to tell that to my lawyer, eh? I ain't rolling over for you spineless fucks. Ah, I'm calling your bluff. I know all about your solo material. And through an acquaintance in the industry, I happen to know approximate sales figures, too. And what?! I do not believe you can afford a lawyer, my dear. Ooh. Ouch. The expression on Glenn's face is one of uncontrollable fury, something that more or less confirmed Ty's hypothesis. He simmered for only a brief moment as he took a quick glance at the muscular bull towering over him. What may have been his smartest move all evening, he did not escalate the situation with physical action, instead sticking with words. If he hadn't, I fully expected he'd be spending the night breathing through a tube. Say it again, but you ain't got the balls, coward. Lucas launched forward once more, taking several large steps closer and stopping only inches away as he deliberately towered over him, a move intended to intimidate Glenn while irritating his specific insecurities. He said you can't afford a lawyer. Glenn's stature was truly brought into perspective as Lucas towered over him, arms folded. I almost felt embarrassed for Glenn. One wrong move and Lucas would use his bones in lieu of drumsticks. Hmm. Glenn backed off slightly, doing his best to remain staunch and menacing despite having been well and truly outmatched. Lucas disarmed Glenn's aggression in short order, knowing exactly how to get under his skin. There's no doubt he once had to do that with, with notable frequency. Fine. Then I challenge you both to a rock-off. You what? A rock-off. One week from today, next Thursday night. We play... We both play... We both play a gig as the Black Claws. You two sell it in your shit material versus me and my kick-ass new band. Different venues, same time. Fixed, identical ticket price. Whoever sells more tickets and gets a better review from the press keeps the name. But I bet you're too pussy to agree to my terms. This can only end one way, with both of you being exposed to the sellouts you are. Suicide. Might as well hand over the name right now. Save yourselves the embarrassment. Ty scratched his chin before stepping in front of Lucas and offering Glenn his hand. I accept. Really? Glenn gra- One second, y'all. Glenn grabbed Ty's hand and shook back with a vice-like grip. Squeezing as tightly as he could, the two locked eyes. Ty's confident smile met with a sinister smirk for the two finally disengaged with their conversation resuming. You two have no basis, and I bet you're both rusty as all hell, too. Meanwhile, I have a skilled band that's ready to go. You have bitten off more than you can chew. Anyway, I got better things to be doing than hanging around here with you two useless fucks. I better start thinking of new band names. You're gonna be needing one real soon. Be seeing ya. And with that, he turned away and threw open the double doors to the venue, departing the venue with a confident and somewhat ridiculous strut. Turning towards Ty, it was clear from his expression that he was having some doubts. I... apologize profusely, Lucas. I did not... Ty sighed deeply, his hand clasped around the bridge of his nose as he shook his head, disappointed in his lack of self-control. Lucas shared a similar expression of uncertainty, but nonetheless approached Ty, putting his hand on Ty's shoulder like I had done to him only ten minutes prior. Why are you apologizing? This is good, isn't it? This way we can find we can get to finally put him in his place and settle the rights to the band name once and for all. What? What? You seriously think we're gonna be we're gonna lose to Glenn? Come on, you were always a talent in the band. This is gonna be a massacre. You flatter me so, but we are going to be so busy, do you? Have time? Ty, the tournament starts tomorrow. Workload is gonna ease up considerably on my end. I've got time. Oh. Great, thank you. I I sincerely hope Glenn is not our only visitor this evening. Uh, Lucas grabbed his phone, an older model with a cracked screen inside a heavy-duty case, and checked the time before turning back towards the two of us. Ain't due to start for a little while yet, Ty. Relax. 
Yeah, Ty, I've heard you guys play. You're amazing. Clint doesn't stand a chance. Hmm. Thank you both for the vote of confidence. Now we wait, I suppose. Hopefully soon some aspiring bassists will arrive to fill our ranks. I guarantee they will. Between Lucas and me, our confidence seemed to quell Ty's concerns. It was an interesting moment, not least due to the cheerful smile on Lucas's face. In an attempt to support his best friend, he'd accidentally let the mask slip, and I had every intention to capitalize on that. You're cute when you smile, Lucas. What? It's nice. You should do it more often. I... I... Before Lucas could retort, Ty once again burst into cheerful laughter. Oh, dear Lucas, it would seem that the hunter has your number. Hmm. After twenty or so minutes of tormenting poor Lucas, I took my place by the door where a long line had formed while Ty and Lucas were in the, their positions on stage. Turnout was far greater than expected, and it was just as well I'd been here to help control the crowds. So far, auditions had been running for about two hours. I wouldn't take the person's name and direct them to the stage where they'd perform a single song. Any performer who they played more than one song with would require a stamp next to the name on my list, becoming a part of the short list. One second, y'all. Water time. Hey, guys and gals. All right, and we are back. Let's jump right back into it, shall we? Okay. Many aspiring players had come and gone, leaving a single song before being sent on their merry way. I had grown somewhat weary as the line of performers seemed somewhat front-loaded in terms of quality, the recent performers having been a little disappointing. To mention that after our significant amount of exercise, I was more than ready to collapse into a soft bed and fall into a total coma. Thankfully, however, my wariness would soon be shaken free. Something that began as Ty dismissed yet another lackluster player and motioned to me for another. I addressed the musician immediately in front of them, taking their name and number before directing them towards the stage. I jotted down the details as the band began to play before being caught unawares by a strangely familiar voice emanating from immediately, immediately in front of me. A most enthusiastic hello to you, Hunter. Eh? Oh, come now. Surely you have not forgotten my distinctive and handsome face. Jay, wow, long time no see. Only a few precious days, my good fellow, but in eternity it may well seem. How do you fare? Uh, me? Well, I'm fantastic if I'm honest. Now, that makes quite the change from our last encounter. A rare yet highly sought-after response indeed. The last time I enjoyed your company, you and the delightful tiger over yonder were in something of a rough patch. Is your cheerful and upbeat status due to some fantastic news, perhaps? Heh, <laughs> you could say that, as I'm sure you guessed, Ty and I patched things up. Not only that, but... I hesitated before taking a glance towards the stage. With flawless timing, the band began an audition. Ensuring that my words would not be overheard, I turned back to Jay, completing my sentence. I think I've completely fallen for him. I'm head over heels. Ah, lovely. I just knew in my heart of hearts that the two of you would work at work things out. I'm positively elated for you. Thanks, Jay, and sorry if I ruined the mood the other night at the strip club. I know I wasn't good company. Come now, love. Our mutual friend, in all his wisdom, dragged you along to a strip club when all you wanted was to reconcile with a certain hunky tiger. Of course you weren't good company, and nobody would expect that of you. I'm glad you can see that. I don't think Eric could. Worry not. Words were had, I can assure you. But you must forgive Eric. His heart is in the right place, but his head is all wrong in the very best of times. Heh, <laughs> you can say that again. I'm glad you think so, actually. I found it kind of weird the two of you are friends. Seems like a strange fit is all. Ah, as it would so happen, he and I share some rather specific interests and hobbies. Our involvement is symbiotic, as it were. We are hardly best friend material. That being said, I do very much enjoy his company regardless. Warts and all, as it may be sometimes. I hate to think what the two of you get up to. I would think so. Worry not, I shall spare you the grisly details. Heh. <laughs> Thanks, so, uh, what brings you here? Come now, my good fellow. Does the bass t does the bass guitar on my back truly not give it away? Oh, you mean, you play bass? Indeed I do. Surprised. I mean, a little, I guess. I just thought Lucas had been as asking around. Surely Eric should have something to, sh should have something to him, right? Should have said something to him, right? Eric? Ha! <laughs> that rat cannot sell a bass guitar from a ukulele. Cannot tell a bass guitar from a ukulele. Alas, he and I do not overlap in the realms of song, owing primarily to his complete lack of musicality. Huh. That explains it, then. Ty had asked me to keep an eye out for a bassist, but I had no idea you played. I guess it's a happy accident you came anyway, right? On the contrary, nothing could have prevented my, my presence this evening. Merely the opportunity alone is a dream come true. For you see, it was Glenn's bass performances that inspired me to learn the instrument in the first place. 
If you told my younger self that I'd one day audition as his replacement, well, I know that I, I know not what I'd have thought, though the word liar certainly comes to mind. Yeesh, I suppose you'd have some mixed feelings about all this, huh? No, not so much, I suppose. I've heard the stories and know all about Glenn's reputation. I respect his music, his songwriting, and his overall talent, but I fear that I simply do not respect him as a person. The man is quite clearly like an egotistical control freak. The man is quite clearly like an egotistical control freak lacking in any self-awareness. That sounds about right, actually. I had the distinct honor of finally meeting the guy a couple hours back before the auditions began. But let's just say he's not welcome back in the band, and came very close to a clobbering from Lucas. Close, you say? What a shame. Could do with being taken down a few notches. Oh well, this evening his losses will hopefully become my gain. I'm so very thrilled to have this opportunity. I do hope that I can impress Ty and Lucas. Being here truly is a dream come true. Auditioning to replace the very source of my inspiration. The way I see things, every note I have played, every hour I have practiced, it was all in anticipation of this moment. I cannot afford to let it go to waste. Hunter, I've been signaling for the next audition. Is there a... Oh! Jay, was it not? You were our waiter not so long ago at the new cafe in town. It is wonderful to see you in front of a microphone again, Ty. How many ears have longed for your serenade? How my ears have longed for your serenade? I am truly honored to have this opportunity to join you on stage, even if only for a single song. Jay's overwhelming charm and charisma helped conceal his nervousness, something that his body language betrayed. Watching Ty's response, he had noticed this as well, adapting his approach to help Jay grow comfortable. The honor is all mine, my dear. Do try to relax and take a few deep breaths. That obvious, huh? It would seem my acting skills leave something to be desired. I should be thankful they are not on display instead. Exactly right. A terrific consideration. If it helps you to focus, think of me as nothing more than a local barman. After all, that is all I have been for a number of years now. It's okay, actually. I tend to perform quite well under pressure. Ah, truly desirable trait to have as a musician. We face a great deal of pressure in this line of work. Whenever you are ready, we will rejoin Lucas atop the stage. Thanks to a certain wolf leaving them at the venue a number of years back, there is a bass stack all, all set up and ready to go. You need only plug it in. Phew. I've been ready my whole life. That's the spirit. Head on up and get yourself ready. I will join you shortly. Forcing a confident yet coolly faint smile, Jay skipped towards the stage with his guitar and began connecting it up to the stack next to Lucas, who had been eyeing him up with curiosity, no doubt wondering what the hold had been, hold up had been. I do so love his confidence and enthusiasm. I'm looking forward to seeing how this pans out. I don't know him that well, but he seems like a great guy. I hope he can pull this off. I hope so, too. With such an infectious and upbeat personality, performing alongside him would be fun. And after all, is fun not precisely what we seek? It'll only be fun if you can actually play the instrument. Well, yes, that would that would be something of a desirable bonus, would it not? Ty chuckled, flashing me an anticipatory grin as he turned tail and returned to his, to his position on the stage. Jay's smile projected confidence, but his submissive body language and scared look in his eyes suggested otherwise. As Jay warmed up his fingers, the three briefly discussed their song choice. I could only hear bits and pieces over the bustle of the crowd, but it seemed as though Jay had chosen a deep cut from the band's back catalog. So I think it seemed a pleasant surprise to both Ty and Lucas alike. Alright y'all, I'm actually going to pause it right there. We'll see how the edition goes in the next video. <coughs> oh god, my throat. Alright y'all, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can, it always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank y'all if I do for the channel, we greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our tier patron, Cade Silver, and thank you to our beyond, it's greatly appreciated. Thanks to our two gold tier patrons, Ziki and Toby. Y'all are awesome, we love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe for more contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye